everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be making a new macrame project that I've never done before. And that is a rug. This was requested and when it was requested I got super excited because I've always wanted to make a macrame rug and for whatever reason I just never have. So I'm excited to do this with you guys. This is kind of going to be trial and error but also a tutorial, I guess. Basically, you guys are gonna create with me, all right? I'm gonna show you my process of creating this and hopefully at the end, it turns into a rug. <laughs> so for this project, what you're gonna need is some rope. I am using five millimeter tw single twisted cotton rope. I've never used this before but I saw it, it was on sale when I got it, so I got really excited and can't wait to use it. I have sketched out a design, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I have sketched out a design of what I want to do for this rug, so I'm not going in completely blind. It's going to be fairly simple, just basic knots with one woven diamond design which I have done a tutorial on so it's nothing new um, but yeah simple but also really fun I think it will be and I'm really excited to give this a try my plan is to do three feet long and one and a half feet wide so not the biggest rug but also not tiny so I am so we are going to need a lot of rope for this, obviously. Um, but yeah, since we are making a rug that is going to be about three feet long, and that is including the fringe, I did calculate that into it, we're going to need about 25 feet of rope for each rope. So that is going to be a lot. Um, I don't know how many yet, but obviously I'll tell you guys once I do it. But my estimate is probably about 30 ropes, so 30 measured 25 feet long. And hopefully that is going to work out. I don't know if you guys know this little trick. You probably do if you have been making macrame for a little bit. Lots of macrame makers measure their mo ropes this way, but I hate sitting down and actually measuring rope with uh, measuring tape. So what I do is I do the wingspan. I'm about 5'3", so I just say that my wingspan is 5 feet long. And I just take my rope, hold it out to my wingspan, and then do however many I need. So I'm going to have to do 5 wingspans to do 25 feet. It is a lot quicker than precisely measuring, but it's not the most accurate. So if you need accurate measurements, I recommend measuring one rope precisely, and then you can just match the length of all your other ropes. It makes it go a lot faster. Or you can be like me and just use your wingspan because I don't have a lot of patience to sit down and precisely measure every rope. But you do you and I'll do me. No judgment here. <laughs> So I will see you once I have measured all my ropes, <laughs> okay? And it's gonna take me a while because, ah, it's a lot. You're gonna wanna go ahead and attach your ropes to some kind of rod. It does not matter what you use. Do not go out and get anything special because we're gonna end up cutting it off, but this is just to make making our rug easier, so. And if you are new, I am just attaching my ropes to my dowel rod with a lark's head knot, so all you do is fold your ropes in half, take it over your dowel rod, you have a little loop, and you just send the two ropes through the loop, and it's a lot of rope, so be patient with yourself. And then you just give it a tug to secure. That's all you do. And we're gonna do this for 30 ropes about. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, guess how much I cannot stand cutting ropes. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> Finally! 
finally! Okay, so I ended up using 36 ropes and it is exactly 18 inches long, which is a foot and a half, which is what I wanted, so it worked out great. I have an even number for my square knots and I have the length, or I guess width, I wanted. So that took me about an hour. I did watch TV while I did it because I just, I need it. <laughs> so, um... Now what we're going to do is I'm going to measure down how much I want my fringe to be. So let me measure and figure out where I want that to be and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so what I did was I measured two and a half inches from the top part, or I guess the bottom part of my lark's head. And I taped it so right underneath the tape I used is where two and a half feet sit, or I'm sorry, two and a half inches sit. Okay, so as you can see, I changed locations for where to hang this. I decided I needed some more vertical space, so all I did is I am using a door that had some coat rack hooks, and that's what I'm hanging this from. And I have taped off my two and a half inches and so what I decided I'm going to do is go through and do a row of square knots and I'm pretty sure I'm going to do three full rows of those so let's do it. To make a square knot I'm just going to take the four ropes on the end, we're going to work in sections of four and I'm going to take the rope here on the right, cross it over the two in the middle to form a loop. The string on the left goes over behind the two in the middle and then through the loop. Pull that tight and then I'm going to take the left side to fold over the two in the middle. The string on the other side then goes over behind the two in the middle and through the loop. Pull that tight. And again, I'm going to do that all the way across. Okay, now that I've done one row of square knots, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do another row, and this time alternating square knots, which means I'm going to leave off the two here on the end and use the next two, and then the first two from this little square knot. And I just make square knots using that system all the way across. Okay, so I ended up doing three rows of square knots all the way across. And now what I'm gonna do is find where my center is. And I'm gonna start doing more square knot rows, but I'm gonna do it so that there is a diagonal line. And after I do my square knots, I'm going to do a row of double half hitch knots to follow along that diagonal line. Alright, so as you can see, I have completed all my square knots to make this diagonal line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rope to make double half hitch knots along this line. So my center is actually right between these two square knots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross the two in the middle here so that the one actually on this side is what I'm going to be using for my double half hitch knots. And I'm just going to do this to prevent it from pulling and separating right here. So I'm just going to cross them and then start my double half hitch knot. So I'm just going to tuck these ropes out of my way and then I'll start. And I do recommend looking at my tutorial on how to do the double half hitch knot if you are unfamiliar. I will run through it a couple times just to give you a refresher. So we're going to use this rope as our leading rope, meaning we're going to just point it in the direction we want it to go and every other rope is going to get tied around this. We're going to bring up the first rope right behind and curl it up and over and through that loop and you just pull it through. Then I'm going to take that rope 
that we just tied around and curl it up and around and through the loop. And I pull that through. And I'm just gonna repeat this all the way down my line. As you can see, I have now finished my double half hitch knots following my diagonal line. So now it is time to go in and do this side of the project. So I'm just going to repeat the same amount of square knots just on this side so it's like a mirror image. And then I'll go in and do my double half hitch line. Alright, so I have now finished my other side of my square knots and my double half hitch knots to complete the diagonal line. So basically we have half a triangle. And so now my next step is to just go and fill in with square knots. So I'm just going to probably start in the middle and work my way until... I have square knots from here and up. <laughs> so let me do that and then I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. Alright guys, there are just two things that I want to mention. One is being that I made a mistake when I was tying my double half hitch knots and I split my project right in half. I did not do it evenly, one side had an extra rope and that was simply my mistake i just grabbed an extra rope when i was doing it the first pass and i could have gone back and untied all my knots to start over but i really didn't want to do that so what i did was i just made a jumbo size square knot in the middle and i just gathered the enough ropes that i needed to make it line up evenly um it's not an even number of ropes one side i think i grabbed more ropes from um, but I just needed to do it so it was even so that everything else would look even if that makes sense um, you shouldn't have that problem as long as you're careful and split your project correctly in half so just be careful when you do that and then you'll just need to start with a normal square knot with four ropes then you should have a row of two then a row of three the way mine worked out was I have a giant square knot and then a row of three and then after it should be four, five, and so on. So just, you can make the same mistake I made if you like the way it looks. Um, it's definitely not perfect, but this is only going to be for me and my own personal use, so I'm not too upset about it. I would have been more upset having to untie all my knots, but you know. Sometimes you just have to roll with your mistakes. And the other thing I just wanted to point out is that when you are tying your square knots, you're always gonna be doing alternating square knots. So you'll be grabbing two ropes from the previous square knot and then two new ropes to tie it. And we're doing this just so that there aren't huge gaps because if I just did four new ropes, I would have big gaps in my project and I don't want that just because I want this tightly woven since it's going to be a rug. So yeah, just make sure you do that and make sure you're careful when you're splitting your project in half. This is definitely a case of do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and I guess I will see you when I have it all filled in to show you what it looks like. So let me get to it. All right, so this is what it looks like now. I have it completely filled in with square knots. And now it's time to do my center diamond. And basically, I'm just gonna start it in the middle. I'm gonna be extra careful this time to make sure I do my middle correctly. 
and it's gonna probably be about half the size of this so it'll probably be boom and then boom and so on and so I need to cut in my square knots again like I did up here so I'd probably cut about this much in and then I can finish my diamond so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in so I can show you how many rows I did and then we can do the diamond together okay guys I have finished cutting in my center diamond just the top half because we'll do the bottom half without the square knots so this is what it looks like and I will again post how many rows and number of square knots in each rows I needed just to make it a little easier for you guys But now my next step is to go ahead and do the top part of my diamond in double half hitch knots. All right, this time being extra careful, I'm going to remember where my center is. And I'm still going to cross the two that are in the center just to fill in that little gap. So I'm going to tuck all these off to the side so I don't accidentally grab one. And now I'm going to start my double half hitch knots right along this diagonal using this rope. And there is the first side and so now I'm gonna go across and do this side and it is the exact same process for tying the knot but I will show you again because I know switching sides can be a little tricky sometimes I'm gonna take my leading rope and point it in the direction I want it to go and every other rope is gonna get tied around this and I'll start by bringing my first working rope right up behind to form a loop. That working rope curls up and through the loop. I pull it through, then I pull it tight, and then I take that working rope in front of my leading rope to form the loop. It curls up and around and through. Then I pull it tight. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way across. Ta-da! All right, so I finished my double half hitch knots. And now it's time to do the woven center and complete the diamond. All right, guys, so my original plan to fill my diamond was gonna be to do a woven pattern. But I recently uploaded a tutorial on filling a diamond with the fishbone pattern and I really liked the way it looked. So I think I'm actually going to do that instead. So if you don't know, we're just going to do a square knot right in the center with our four knots. And by now you are all masters at the square knots. I mean, we just did a million of them, so <laughs> I don't think I need to show you guys again how to do a square knot. All right, once you are done with your first square knot, we're gonna take the two ends, so the far right and the far left, and I'm gonna bring them up to tuck out of my way, so I'm just gonna hang them on my dowel rod. And then I'm gonna grab the next two strings and tie a square knot around my center. And 
then again, I'm going to tuck those two ends out of the way. And I'm just going to keep repeating this pattern. So I'm going to grab my next two and do another square knot. Okay, so once you finish your fishbone pattern, we're going to drop all the ropes back down. And oh, I forgot to mention, do, don't include your leading rope in with your square knots. We're going to use it to complete our diamond. We're going to use the same leading rope for that. Okay, so now that they're all dropped, it's time to do our double half hitch knots to finish our diamond. So we're just going to start with the one on the top here and tie our double half hitch knots as we have been. So these are our working ropes and we're using the same leading rope so our working rope comes behind, curl it up and through, pull that tight. Okay, so I have completed one half of my diamond, and as you can see, this is kind of the pattern that it should look like. I think it's really pretty. Um, it's kind of woven without actually being woven, because there's the other strings right behind that go that direction. Um, so I think it's sort of the woven pattern I had originally intended, only not really. <laughs> but I... I love this, so I think this is really pretty. Um, you guys, again, can do whatever, and I'm just gonna complete my diamond using the exact same method I did on this side, and I'll show you what it looks like all complete. Ta-da! <laughs> this is what my diamond looks like. And now my next step is again to fill in my square knots so I'm just gonna go to the end of the diamond and then show you what else to do but if you want to know now it's gonna be basically a mirror image of that so basically it's time to just do the bottom half of our rug I'll see you guys when I have finished <laughs> more square knots yay <laughs> And now I have filled in the rest of my square knots around my center diamond. And so now it is time to do the last part of the rug, which is basically just gonna be a mirror image of this top half. So this time though, instead of filling in the outside of our diamond first, we're gonna fill in the inside of our diamond. So. I'm going to cut in my square knots from the inside, so it's going to go boom, boom, okay? So once again, I will show you, I will tell you how many rows and how many square knots in each row it was, just to make it a little easier, and otherwise, I'm just going to get knotting. <laughs> I did it, guys! I finished tying all, oh, hello, kitty all of my square knots. So I just finished my bottom half and it is symmetrical to the top. It's hard to get a full view of this. Let me go um, vertical shot real fast so you can see. This is what it looks like, almost all finished. Obviously I need to still cut it down and do the fringe part. Um, but yeah, it is so pretty I think. And now my next step is I'm going to probably tie overhand knots on groupings of these square knots just for my French part. I want it kind of gathered together when I do that. This step's going to be optional. I think it will hold together 
okay if you just leave your square knots. I think it's kind of a personal preference. I do think it will be a little more secure if you knot it off. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And then we can make our fringe. Okay, so I went ahead and did two just to see if I kind of liked it. And basically what I'm gonna be doing is taking groups of four. So I'm always gonna be taking two from each square knot holding them together and then I'm just going to do a simple overhand knot so I just curl it up and take it around and through the little loop and then I just pull all that up so it lays up top and then if it's kind of messy all you do to smooth it out is you just pull each individual rope to tighten and smooth And that's what it looks like. And the reason this one here on the end is so much bigger is because I needed to include all four ropes from the square knot. I might go back and just do the last two separately so it's a little smaller. I haven't decided yet. I don't think it looks bad, but I will just have to see what it looks like all finished. And that is what it looks like all finished up with those knots. I really like the way it looks and I think it's going to look even better once I do the fringe part. And I did go back and I changed this to make one normal size knot in one small one. I thought it looked a little better, less out of place. So now I'm just going to slide the lark head knots off the dowel rod. I'm, I originally was going to just cut them off but because I'm doing this overhand knot and I saw how much rope this took up, I want to make sure I have plenty of rope left for French. So I'm just going to slide it up because then I will have all of this that I can use as French. So yeah, I'm just going to slide that off and then tie my overhand knots at the top. Okay guys, so I have another little error that I ran into. I actually did not have long enough ropes on this side to do the overhand knot with four ropes. It's just I couldn't squeeze them all through because it just was too short. So what I am doing now is instead of sections of four, I'm doing sections of two. So I'm always making sure that I use one and one so that it holds these together and then I would use the two in the center together and so on. So that is how I'm fixing my little mistake. I will have to go um, through and untie all these, which is gonna suck because I did them pretty tight, but yeah, I gotta make it even. So I just did not tape, take into account that I was gonna be tying another knot up top. So yeah, but that's okay. This was my first attempt at this and now I will know for next time. is it for today I really hope you enjoyed my rug tutorial I love how it turned out I had a lot of setbacks making it I had to untie and restart a couple of times and I mean you saw my journey there was a few setbacks but I ah, I love the final product I think it's the perfect size I think it's the perfect pattern for what I wanted and I just, I'm excited to get to use this. So I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. 
Also, I know that this was a little different from my usual style of video, so let me know if you liked it, if you want to see more like this, or if you like my normal tutorials. You won't hurt my feelings, so just let me know in the comments below, and please subscribe so you can keep watching more videos from me. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, my kitty! My kitty!